Hi, my name is Dr. Kirsten Overpriller. I'm co-founder and CEO of PentaQuest, and we specialize in using behavioral science and gamification to transform organizations. And what I'll be sharing with you today is some of what I have learned in my PhD research, as well as my professional experience. So what we know is that collaboration is key to today's modern workplaces. Workplaces have undergone a lot of change recently, including seeing an increase of reliance and embracing of technology and using digital ways to enable the work that we do. We're also seeing an increase of working from home arrangements and embracing of flexible arrangements for our staff. This brings with it an increase in focus and importance of employee engagement as well as a focus on the whole self and well-being. Now with this new approach come new challenges for how we work together. So we're seeing challenges like employee engagement, but this is also flowing through to customer attention and retention, the self and well-being from a personal perspective, political engagement and policy making, as well as environmental sustainability. Now, what all of these challenges have in common is that they are about harnessing human capital and collaboration, and they can all be viewed through the lens of behavioral science. The field of behavioral science is a growing one. It's defined as the study of human behavior, and it includes things such as neuroscience, behavioral economics, gamification, and more. And you can see from the graph here just how much behavioral science has grown since the 1979 publishing um, by Kahneman and Tversky. Behavioral science is seen almost as a revolution and a new way of how we approach today's complex problems. So what behavioral science gives us for the workplace is it gives us the structure, methodology and vocabulary to better understand, predict and shift behavior. So in essence, behavioral science gives us a way to better understand the way that humans behave and it gives us the tools to do something about that. Now, what I'll be focusing on now is gamification being one aspect of behavioral science. So gamification is the use of game mechanics and experience design to engage users and solve real world problems. Now, just so we're all on the same page about what it means, um, you can look at gamification on a bit of a spectrum, where on one side you have play, so free form imaginative play that children do, all the way to the other side where we have our, our real world with all our processes and systems that we know and love. Now, when you add some rules to free form play, you get games. And we've all played games, card games, tabletop, video, consoles, person to person. There are hundreds and thousands of games. When you use those games, which are primarily for fun, and you apply them to a real world skill, they're what's known as applied games. So here we have things like simulations, game based learning and so forth. Now, where gamification fits in is that it takes this one step further. And you can see there's a bit of a continuum here where on one end, particularly when it comes to content gamification, the gamification of knowledge and learning, it can feel quite playful or you can slide it down to the other side of the spectrum where the gamification itself might be quite subtle and you may not even realize it's gamified. And this tends to be around behavioral gamification. Let's go through some examples. So just starting with a example that everybody should be familiar with being Fitbit. Again, you may not have thought about it being gamified before, but let's have a look at it. So what the point of Fitbit is, is it is encouraging you to go out and exercise and to run. The way that it does that is it gives you a clear goal. It's really important, a really clear goal, 10,000 steps, right? And every time I take even a small action towards that goal, I'm being rewarded on this progress bar. So you can see here, this person's doing really well. They've got 19,000 steps um, and there's color as well. So the circle starts as red, goes up to orange and then finishes with green. Now it might sound quite simple, but just the fact of having a clear goal and measuring progress towards it can do a lot for shifting behavior. There are other mechanics in here as well. So for example, badges, very common game and gamification mechanic, and things like challenges, either between yourself or other people. The other example that many of you will be familiar with is Duolingo. It's the world's largest language learning app. 
And you can see from the interface here that it is quite playful and deliberately so because learning a language can be intimidating. So they've gone on the other side of playfulness and made it really friendly. There's a couple of game mechanics at play here. And um, the first one, as you can see on the left here, is the breaking down or the cascading of information. So rather than saying, learn a whole language of 500,000 words, that is say, let's just focus on the basics, then phrases, then basics too. And you're unlocking the content as you go. And that can give a really good sense of progression. The other mechanic I want to point out here is the streak mechanic, which is on the right hand side. Um, the very, very popular mechanic we're seeing in other social media platforms as well. And the idea here is that in order to form a habit, you need to come back and learn and practice your language for at least 10 minutes a day. And if you come back 10 minutes a day for seven days, you get double points the next week. Quite an effective mechanic. So that's just an example of gamification. So why gamification for collaboration? Well, there are several reasons. Gamification taps deeply into the human psychology. As mammals, we all have an innate need to play and to socialize. So it taps into this. It's also based on decades worth of motivational and behavioral research, so we know it works. In workplaces in particular, it also focuses on the reward rather than the mandate or the punishment to shift behavior. And this shift from negative or punitive to positive and rewarding can be quite profound. Gamification has also been shown to improve happiness and well-being, which is important for a flourishing and thriving workplace. We know that it increases behavior and can shift behavior. And it is becoming increasingly popular. Users are more and more expecting wonderfully designed products just for them because that's what they're getting in their personal lives. And so there's an increasing expectation for workplace systems to be equally engaging and well-designed. And dare I say, fun. Now, the first example here is Folded. This is an, an example of where collaboration can achieve really great real world outcomes. So scientists were trying to solve a problem of understanding the crystal structure of an AIDS causing virus. And they've been struggling with this for 15 years, trying to solve this really incredible problem. What they decided to do is turn it into a game, a puzzle type game, made it free to play. And within 10 days, the structure was solved by gamers. Really great example of how to tap into, uh, this was about 240,000 minds, playing it for fun and solving a problem. You can also use gamification for induction of new employees into the workplace. This is an example by La Trobe University that was using gamification as a way to induct people into understanding, um, this was the library, so understanding all the services as well as the location of different various parts of the business. Now, this was really cool because it was a mix of analog and digital. So you needed to work together with somebody else um, and collaborate with them to solve these puzzles. You could enter the puzzles um, into an iPad app and then you need to go around the different building um, areas of the building to solve the puzzles. So a really nice way to get people bonding as well as understanding the services and understanding the building and doing it in a really memorable and fun way. This example is called Idea Street. It's by the Department of uh, Workplace and Pensions in the UK. And this was uh, looking at how do we encourage and, and access all the amazing ideas that our workforce has. So it was quite, quite simple. Um, people could contribute ideas. Those ideas could then be commented and collaborated on. They could be um, upvoted as well. And at the end of this, there were um, 1,400 ideas submitted 63 of those ideas were implemented and it saved the department 20 million pounds. So quite, quite impressive. I also wanted to share with you an example of how you can use gamification in a non-digital way. Gamified experiences that are digital definitely have a lot more power and scale, but if you're looking to just start an experiment with gamification, there's no reason why you can't do it with a pen and paper type of experience. This is one of the examples from my PhD, where I was working with the school and their teachers and looking at how can we get our teachers to collaborate and to innovate together. Now, when it comes to collaboration and innovation, you don't want to have a competitive experience. So we really focused on making it 
team-based. Uh, so you can see there were three big team goals here, a simple progress bar, um, and there was a, a wall of awesome, a way to show appreciation, um, get really nice feedback from the kids. And this really tapped into the underlying need for teachers to see that aha moment in their students' eyes. Now this, again, this was an A0 foam core stuck up on the staff room, so quite, quite physical, um, but still really effective. At the end of uh, the three months measurement pe period here, they had more communication as a team, increased engagement and motivation, increased workplace satisfaction, and they delivered more innovative products and projects in the three months that they had the gamified experience than in the whole year prior. And just the final example of gamification I want to share with you is called Jewel Bug and is looking at environmental sustainability, which arguably is the biggest collaborative challenge that we face as a species today. So that can be a really overwhelming challenge. And so what Jewel Bug does really well is it breaks down this massive challenge into daily behaviors that I as a user can do. So you have different things that you can buzz. So whether it's um, brushing, like turning off the water while you're brushing your teeth, bringing packed lunch. There's, there's dozens and dozens of different small behaviors that you can do every day that contribute. And they actually measure the impact that you're making. So you can see here uh, 174 kilograms of carbon dioxide saved, 22 kilograms of waste diverted, and 1.7 thousand liters of water saved. And there's also a community um, aspect to this game as well. So just to finish, I want to leave you with five steps for how you can take a behavioral science and gamification approach to your challenge. And then I'll finish with some takeaways. So the first step is that you need to understand what is the challenge you're looking to solve and you need to break down this transformation into its behavioral parts. I like to ask if you were to point a camera at it, what would you see? So let's say you are looking to in, looking to increase collaboration amongst your team. If you were to point a camera at it, what is the behavior that you'd see? Would you see people talking together? Would you see them brainstorming on a whiteboard? Would you see them submitting ideas? What does it look like? And you need to get really granular with what you see because anything that can be measured can be turned into a game. So with these behaviors, they need to be small. They need to be relevant to the outcome you're looking to achieve and they need to be frequent. So what is a small daily behavior that you could nudge with your team? Equally, what is a weekly behavior, a monthly one, a half yearly one, and a yearly one? You then need to nudge these behaviors often. So this is where game mechanics play a really important part. You can nudge through individuals, teams, the whole organization. You can have a purely collaborative experience. You can add a bit of friendly competition in. There's over 300 game mechanics. So it's a question about which of those mechanics are right for you and your team. Next, Using digital implementation allows you to make sure that this change is systemic, scalable and measurable. So if you're looking at a diverse workforce or one that's spread out, digital is the way to go. It's also a lot more engaging because you can have immediate feedback, sounds, movement, all of these things that make experiences more engaging. It is also means less admin time for someone who's administering the game. So digital is the way to go. However, as for, per the school example, gamification can be quite effective and it can be done in an analog way. So if you're looking to start, there's no, no harm at all in starting with the pen and paper version and then upgrading um, after that. And finally, you need to look for both tactic, so quick wins, as well as strategic opportunities for applying this method. And finally, some takeaways for you. So first, Modern workforces come with new challenges and they need a human centered solutions. So you need to look at them through a behavioral science lens because any efforts that aren't based with an understanding of psychology, neuroscience and behavioral science, they risk underperforming and falling flat. Gamification is an effective and an innovative way to engage employees to align strategy and culture and to increase collaboration. And finally, as you can see from just some of the very few examples I've shared with you today, gamification comes in so many different shapes, sizes and scales. So to find the right one for you, you need to go through a design process to tailor the experience to your unique organization and context. Thank you for your time today. I hope you've learned something. And next time you look at nudging behavior in the workplace, think about how you can use behavioral science and gamification. Thank you.